depending on the uh, new videos as well. So I would like to move on to the next agenda. But before I move on to the next agenda, I would like to inform you that uh, yesterday AIBD has launched TV AIBD under the Minister of uh, Communication and Multi Multimedia Malaysia. Uh, it is the His Excellency Dato Safuddin Abdullah, that is Minister of Ed Communication and Multimedia Malaysia. So congratulations to AIBD to launch the TV AIBD as well. And I would like to uh, start the next agenda for the special occasion. Uh, because we are now come from the a long way. We have spent uh, many hours already for uh, joining the special summit today. So today we will have a special session that is about the traditional media. So I would like to inform you about the special session today. It is a CEO Insight. So CEO Insight, it's about revitalization of traditional media. And we have our special moderator come from AIBD. It is Ms. Philomena, director of AIBD. So Ms. Philomena, award-winning broadcaster, she has to date initiated the health communication manual and work with WHO, UNU, and NAIH Malaysia to train journalists on health journalism and creating relevant content on COVID-19 awareness. More than 100 journalists from Asia Pacific and Africa have been trained so far. The menu is presided by health experts, science researchers, and media practitioners. Ms. Philomena also has significant experience in both radio and television programming. So, Ms. Philomena, are you with us now? Very good uh, afternoon here in Malaysia, and greetings to everybody for joining us. Thank you, Chamnan. Uh, for being with us the whole day today. And uh, this is a very exciting uh, summit. We are looking at so many different topics and uh, so many speakers, uh, 20 speakers from over uh, 30 countries. Sorry, yes, 30 speakers from over 20 countries. So fantastic. And uh, now I'm really looking forward to this next topic, which is um, the relevance of traditional media, revitalizing traditional media. And I have uh, six CEOs from across uh, Asia and the Pacific. And, um, you know, during COVID-19, when it began in 2020, uh, TV viewers, according to eMarketeer, uh, grew by 8.3 million, and that was a phenomenal growth since the year 2011. Um, but you should also note that it was a year for OTT platforms to be uh, boosted up as well. So very interesting, and I'm going to see uh, how the session is going because uh, we have with us uh, major broadcasters, and we also have a service provider and an educationist um, in this platform. So we'd like to um, look at the speakers for today. So never if you just show the slides of the speakers for today, I will just introduce them very briefly. We have Mr. Shorab uh, Hussain and um, Mr. from from Bangladesh. Iman Brotosino from um, Indonesia, he's the president director, and um, Mr. Shashi Shekharimpati, he's the CEO of Prasar Bharati, and of course, Dr. Mahindra Bista um, from Nepal Television, and um, Ms. Dr. Fintan McKinnon uh, from Ideal Systems, and you have the positions there as well, and of course, Mr. Raji Singham from the Quickfields Asia College Education Group, and they happen to be the latest member, academic member of the IBD. So there you have six eminent um, speakers here with us, and um, I'd like all of you who have questions, I know this is a very interesting topic, please post your questions on the Q&A, and those of you joining us on Facebook, thank you for being with us uh, for the past few hours. All right, without much ado, I'd like to move on to the um, Mr. Sharap Hussain, he is the Director General of Bangladesh Television, a new appointment for him. I see he was a senior member of the Bangladesh Civil Service, and uh, diversity has worked in many backgrounds, in, the capacity, um, in many capacities in Bangladesh government for more than 30 years. And so he has a vast experience in information and broadcasting field, and served as the Regional Director and Director in Bangladesh Beta, which is the radio uh, station under the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. So Mr. Shorab's workstations include um, the Ministry of Cultural Affairs, 
Department of Disaster Management, Ministry of Local Government, Rural Development, and so forth. And he has received training from home and abroad. He has been in Turin University in Italy. And today we're happy to speak with uh, Mr. Shorab Hussain, um, Director General of Bangladesh Television, on the topic revitalizing of traditional media. Thank you, Mr. Shorab. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Philomena and uh, the panel speakers uh, today. Uh, thank you all. Today's, uh, uh, first of all, I thank AIBD for arranging uh, such a uh, nice uh, webinar that is very uh, important issues at this moment that uh, uh, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, that is uh, uh, for a long time uh, in all over the world. Uh, uh, today's uh, subject, that revitalization of traditional media, it is very much important. Actually, uh, I like to say that, um, uh, especially for uh, Bangladesh, we have around uh, 100 million uh, uh, social media users. Uh, so, uh, we are facing uh, today uh, uh, competition with the social media and uh, traditional media. But uh, in the pandemic situation, it, it is uh, uh, hope that <coughs> people uh, actually uh, uh, rely on the uh, traditional media for their authentic authenticity and uh, uh, they are uh, pro-people uh, activities. So uh, again, I thank the organizer. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, you know that first case was <coughs> detected in March 8, 2020. Uh, and uh, since uh, yesterday, we have uh, around uh, 804,293 uh, mm -hmm. infected cases and uh, death is 2,694. Uh, here, uh, you know that Bangladesh is very a uh, populated country, a uh, small country, but huge population, <coughs> around uh, one, uh, 80 million uh, uh, people uh, in our country at this moment. So for this COVID situation, it is very uh, uh, much um, dangerous for its um, uh, uh, infection uh, situation. But from the very beginning, uh, our uh, government, especially head of the government, Her Majesty uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, is um, uh, uh, working uh, uh, with us. Uh, she has been given directions to the uh, committees, uh, COVID-19 committees. She declared 31 point uh, directives to the, uh, for combat uh, COVID-19. Uh, introduced quick launching of Tracer app and uh, screening of passengers that uh, at the airport, uh, uh, you know that from the very beginning in, in Bangladesh, the uh, suspected cases were uh, from China and also Europe, especially Italy. So uh, there was a tight screening of the passengers at the airport and also uh, uh, all the land ports. Uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is uh, regularly uh, giving directives to the administrators, political leaders to combat this situation. And more significantly, uh, the uh, government declared uh, 1.01 trillion uh, uh, stimulus packages uh, for the um, uh, uh, industry sector, health sector, uh, media sector, in all cases, actually, uh, it was a very uh, uh, brilliant, uh, steps from the government. Uh, now uh, I like to say that the steps that uh, we uh, from our government uh, from the very beginning is that uh, from uh, 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 formation of COVID-19 uh, response committee uh, at the very beginning, diagnosis facilities is uh, spread all over the country. We have uh, facilities to uh, uh, diagnosis uh, systems in uh, the district level and even also in the Upuzila levels. Uh, quarantine and um, uh, isolation uh, system uh, introduced. 
uh, first uh, local and regional lockdown. First of all, uh, when the pandemic started, uh, last year, the uh, whole country was locked down. And uh, in some cases, the uh, partial lockdown uh, was uh, imposed. Uh, shutdown of all government and private offices for a uh, 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 very short time and uh, uh, shutdown of all institutional uh, additional institutions from the very beginning until today the additional institutions are uh, closed because government especially prime minister and the educational minister thinks that um, our next generation uh, we, 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 we must keep them safe and uh, the inst additional institutions are uh, yet uh, it is closed. Ban of all public gatherings and transportation services, uh, extension of social safety net programs that I uh, um, uh, men, ma mentioned earlier uh, little, uh, increase public awareness program and enforced social distancing uh, process. Now, uh, I, I like to say that role of Bangladesh television uh, in awareness, awareness uh, creating program that we uh, started from the very beginning. Actually, uh, uh, today uh, we like to say that uh, uh, I mentioned that around 100 million people are using uh, social media. So uh, we, uh, in the social media, we have uh, huge informations, huge um, uh, topics, huge entertainment programs, and at the same time, some misleading uh, informations also is in the social media. So people sometimes uh, are frustrated to see all these uh, information when they uh, get it there. But uh, at the same time, uh, from Bangladesh television and from the traditional medias, we are always disseminating information. And uh, significantly, um, the people uh, keep their trust lastly trust to the traditional medias because of its authenticity, because of its um, uh, uh, reliability and the thing that uh, fact checking, when we, 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 all, uh, we are media people, we as a traditional media, especially Bangladesh television government owned um, Bangladesh television that has been working from 1964. And uh, we, we first check and recheck the um, uh, information and then we go for uh, hearing. So in these cases, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have had uh, trust to the people for um, information dissemination in the, especially in the COVID situation. Um, uh, uh, Bangladesh television uh, is uh, broadcasting some uh, uh, programs, especially some new programs. Actually, Bangladesh television is the only terrestrial media in Bangladesh. We have terrestrial and satellite broadcasting system, but as a terrestrial, we have the uh, greater reach to the um, uh, uh, remote areas. As a state public broadcaster, a significant role for public awareness on critical issues. And we have been uh, doing these things from the very beginning of this pandemic. Uh, COVID-19 situation, actually, uh, we are working the uh, system in this way that uh, we have a, a, a daily, uh, uh, daily system, daily uh, from the IEDCR, they uh, declare the, um, Every day, um, pending in situation, the death cases and the, the infection cases, infected cases. So all these things we, we uh, regularly we broadcast from the uh, IUDCR daily. And at the same time, we have some uh, regular programs that non-therapeutic programs to open, that is for awareness program is uh, we are uh, helping the government that uh, travel ban and remote office activities, country lockdown, most importantly, wearing a face mask and keeping social distancing. As when there is lockdown, there is um, other activities as government-owned media, we, at the same time, we uh, broadcast the programs to support the government to create awareness uh, to the people so that they abide by the government decisions and they uh, help the government to combat this problem. <coughs> 
situation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shorab. You have exactly one minute uh, left. Do you have anything left to say to wrap up? Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I think um, uh, uh, this situation, um, uh, uh, here is actually some programs from Minister the uh, people uh, and he's giving uh, directions, our information minister, Dr. Hassan Mahmoud, and we have some health bulletins and news programs. So uh, to wrap up the program, we'd like to say that at this pandemic situation, you know that um, uh, we, are, we are very much uh, we have regained ourselves. I think in this situation that people actually um, like these traditional medias, they uh, depend on the traditional medias. So uh, uh, this, this uh, pandemic situation, COVID-19, uh, as a traditional media, Bangladesh television, we think that we have more and more to do and people are with us uh, for our authenticity and for our um, program uh, design. Uh, and uh, 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 one more program we introduced uh, as um, for more than one year, our uh, education institutions are closed. So government introduced a program that my school is at my home. As uh, we have uh, all the students do not have the access to uh, internet and a smartphone. So we have television program on uh, our Shangsar television from 9 a.m. to 2.20 daily for the education uh, program for the students. So what was I was actually like to say that <clears throat> we are very much, um, uh, we feel extended uh, at this situation that we will have to actually now uh, work with the social media, how to, how to reach the social media viewers, how to reach there. And in this uh, uh, context, we introduce some programs. Uh, we also, uh, we go on uh, social media and also how to incorporate social media programs in our uh, television programs. This is, these are uh, some challenges at this moment. We have uh, introduced uh, BTV apps, Bangladesh television apps, from that uh, everybody can uh, enjoy television uh, at uh, any uh, space, anywhere. Mm, so the main thing I like to say that we'll uh, have to go for research, how to, uh, how to reach the uh, huge number of people who are now uh, engaged with social medias. Here, here social media, you, we all know that here is the age limit is uh, from the very uh, student to uh, aged people, a huge number of people. So uh, we are trying to engage these people uh, to our uh, traditional medias. And uh, for that, we need research, what these people actually like, what they want. Uh, we are going to introduce some research and uh, we are re really um, uh, strengthened and we feel strengthened that we have to do more. We, we have to do more for the people. And we, as a traditional media, we are, we were, and we will be in future, and uh, we will have to uh, do more things. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharab. I think well said. Uh, you have summed up a lot of things, and uh, we're very grateful to have your insight um, the traditional media during the pandemic. Next, I'd like to move on to Mr. Iman Brotiseno. Iman Brotiseno is um, President Director from uh, TBRI, Television uh, Republic Indonesia. And um, Iman is one of the prominent bloggers in Indonesia and um, one of the main opinion leaders as well in digital Indonesian digital community. Uh, but for those who know the film industry, Mr. Iman Bochuseno is a well-seasoned film director and has directed more than 1,500 creative pieces including TV commercials, documentaries, and music videos. And so when he's not directing uh, films, he is a passionate diver and established underwater photographer. So a man of many talents. Um, he's currently uh, also taking up the role as film director at the company and um, determining creative aspect changes based on this specific, specified communications technology. So Iman Bodhisattva, we're very honored to have you here today. You come from quite a um, different background. And I think this is really exciting because even as we talk about traditional media, even movie industry is moving on to different platforms. So that's something really um, to think about, right? And I think Bollywood is a very good example. Um, so we'll come to Shashi later on, but um, Iman Bodhisattva, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Pilomena.
and all the participants, uh, ABD, ABD uh, CEO inside of the leaders web summits. Yeah. Uh, today I'm trying uh, to present uh, actually not presentation. Yeah, I just have the small presentation. Maybe uh, we can start from now. Okay, uh, that's uh, as we know that we are now in the face of the new normal, and no one uh, has yet been able to predict the, the end of this pandemic. So, however, uh, we know, I think in Indonesia, TVRI as a state-owned uh, TV broadcast uh, has changing the role of, role of the model, uh, the way we deliver the communication. So, so uh, it's not only the way we produce the program, but also, uh, for instance, yeah, we, we cannot have 100 audience during the music concert in our studio. Yes. Uh, so, we design the kind of the program that uh, also meet our uh, health protocol in Indonesia. So for, uh, first of all, that's uh, TVRI is uh, as a public broadcasting media, that's uh, we take the part of ensuring children in Indonesia to have access to educate when the school is still uh, close, yeah. So, uh, if you know the TVRI is only national media that uh, we have the program for 45 million students across the countries from various level, elementary school, high school, and vocational schools. And we have a program that we call Belajar di Rumah. Yeah. Next, Belajar di Rumah is actually is uh, the guidance for implementing the new form of education and learning, increasing the effort to combat the spread of disinformation, improving the quality information in an ethical manner. Are just a few examples of the opportunity that exists nowadays. Yeah, since the April 2020, uh, TVRI launched uh, home learning. We call Belajar di Rumah, so everyone uh, can continue the study from home instead of uh, going to school. So we become the first national media that broadcasts learning activities from home for all the various educational level. Yeah. Learning from home through television is an important moment for students and teachers to try new things in the teaching and learning process. So uh, our program, this BDR, Belajar, from, uh, Belajar Dari Rumah or Learning From Home, is actually become one of the uh, attractive program in TVRI. So in terms of the share of audience uh, and rating also, uh, this, this kind of the program actually is uh, one step ahead if you compare with the uh, soccer game or uh, uh, English Premier League, actually. So everybody in Indonesia, it's very depending on the, this kind of program now. Next. Uh, this is also an example that media and collaborative initiative. This is a Oh, what actually from uh, patent is one of our TVR program created during the pandemic. So this program is designed for small business owner, local traders, startup who need space to sell their product on television. So this is uh, actually uh, the answer from TVRI when our president asked that TVRI has to be uh, help for in terms of economic. This is uh, sometimes we give them chance to, the chance to chase the everyone dreams and we give everyone the opportunity to sell their product, the, their uh, 
uh, their uh, kind of uh, product in any kind in television. And the other thing is a uh, sample that media and digital literacy to fight this information because we aware in Indonesia, sometimes people believe in hoax. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, so many false information spread or hoax about the COVID-19 pandemic. So we are in TVRI takes the role by doing digital literacy in an effort to fight this false information or hoax. So digital literacy is carried through several methods such monitoring, fact checking, legislative response, government policies, and also through our social media. So uh, next. So this is also, uh, that's clear that uh, digital technology also allow us to move large portion in our life online maintain the economic and educational system when most people live at home and help us to connect with each other. So it has been more than a year that the whole is struggling to deal with the global pandemic. So, so this is uh, many aspects of our life impact and one of the worst sector is being hit by pandemic is economic sector. Government needs to figure out the way with Venues on how to ensure the salvation of the nation and all the instruments in it during and after pandemic. Yeah. Next. This is also media in time a crisis. We create a creativity and innovation for a multiple platform. As you know that COVID-19 crisis remind us that we must keep our creativity in innovation to produce quality content while finding new ways and to maintain socially useful digital technology application and focus on increasing access and use by media, public broadcast media in particular. In that sense, we can keep in touch with the audience. So TVRI also, they have the several of social media platform. So, uh, not only terrestrial, so we're running on the digital because this is, uh, I think, the era of the digital. So the, this, the, to conclude of my speech, that I would, I would like to say that during the pandemic, the trend has shifted to flavor the conventional media like TVRI. We are being tried to take this difficult situation as an opportunity by consistently providing the basic needs of the people or dependable or trustworthy information. We can, provide, we can prove our capacity and relevant on this digital area. Thank you, I think. Thank you, Mr. Iman Brochuseno, uh, President Director of uh, TBRI, and um, very interesting um, things that you mentioned in there, you know, school, school from home. So television seems to have taken a role um, as, 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 as a school teacher, as well as, um, you know, a tool for uh, allaying disinformation and also um, looking at something to um, increase the uh, economic output of those um, from the uh, poverty, poverty stricken or those who've lost their jobs, especially during this COVID-19. So you're looking at the economic uh, triggering effect as well. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Iman. We'll come back to uh, you later in the Q&A session. But next, I'd like to move on to um, the CEO of Prasabharati, um, India's largest um, broadcaster. And uh, we have with us today, Mr. Shashi Shekhar Venpati. CEO of Prasaparati, and he happens to be the first non-bureaucrat CEO of India's public broadcaster since 2017. And um, Shashi is also known as the digital man of India. So he's a very digital guy. So that's why I'm excited to have him here today to see what he's saying about a broadcaster. He's heading a broadcaster, okay? So he's seeing the transformation of the twin networks of Doodishan, comprising more than 35 
TV channels and um, all hundred all India radio stations. And India is a very big country, of course. So he serves on the board of the Indian Broadcasting Foundation IBF and the Broadcast Audience Research Park, apart from the Indian Council uh, for World Affairs and the Public Service Broadcasting Trust. So he's an author, he's a columnist, and so she has published on politics, public policy, and emerging areas of technology like AI and uh, broadcast broadband conversions. So he's an innovator and he holds patents in the area of real-time event management within wireless census networks. So we have a guy here who is a digital man. Shashi, the floor is yours. We're waiting to see what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Philomena. Very uh, excited and uh, glad to be here. I think this is my first uh, time at an AIBD event. Uh, so thanks for the invitation. And uh, it's also doubly special uh, that uh, my colleague, uh, Mayank, just took over as the uh, president of the general council of AIBD. So very happy that uh, I've debuted on an AIBD event just at the you know moment that uh, he took over. Uh, uh, I, I would like to begin uh, with uh, you know uh, paying tribute uh, to all the media persons who have you know uh, both in here in India within our network. Uh, in fact, we've lost more than hundred uh, of our colleagues uh, to COVID-19. I'm sure uh, media persons across the globe, various countries, uh, who've been working tirelessly to bring uh, timely uh, information and awareness over COVID-19, uh, perhaps uh, have. Uh, you know, been exposed to the uh, virus and uh, have perhaps some of them have lost their life. So I just wanted to take a moment to pay a tribute to all of them. Uh, and I think uh, just like every other uh, frontline uh, worker or a professional who's uh, been at the forefront of uh, fighting this pandemic, I think media persons have played a very crucial role in creating awareness, uh, dispelling the myths, dispelling the fake news. Uh, and and getting the right information out there, uh, and so their contribution is no less uh, than you know uh, anybody else. Uh, so I think it's uh, important that we all uh, remember uh, uh, all of our colleagues uh, who have you know played a very crucial role uh, during this very challenging time. Uh, can we have the uh, presentation on, please? Thank you. Uh, so I think when I saw this topic and uh, uh, you know what, how did broadcast media rise to the challenge, especially in this environment and these challenging circumstances? One of the first things that uh, struck to me when I look back at the last 12 months or 14 months uh, is how uh, you know everyone is talking about this phrase called the new normal. Uh, and the new normal has become a buzzword, a catchphrase, uh, and perhaps even a cliche. Uh, but uh, the reality is that you know several old things uh, you know came to the rescue and old media especially uh, came to the rescue uh, when you know there was complete paralysis uh, last year uh, you know towards the end of march uh, india went into a nation nationwide lockdown a very unprecedented set of circumstances uh, that nobody had anticipated they would see in their lifetime uh, and, and that was a moment where uh, the uh, public media uh, uh, had no break, no lockdown. We were working 24-7. Uh, so while the entire planet, entire country took a pause, uh, we were there 24-7. And uh, because of the COVID-19 uh, restrictions and constraints, uh, uh, most production, most content generation came to a standstill in the private industry. Uh, and that was a moment where uh, citizens looked forward to the, uh, you know, the twin networks of Durdarshan, All India Radio, uh, with great anticipation, great expectations, and they were not disappointed uh, because uh, we had this uh, unique phenomenon where our television ratings hit an all-time high across the industry, and this is unprecedented. Uh, that those three months uh, you had tremendous television viewing because entire families were. Uh, at home uh, during the lockdown. Uh, uh, India, uh, as you know, has a rich uh, and uh, ancient culture and uh, tradition of culture. Uh, so some of the epics uh, like the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, uh, which had been televised many decades back, came back on TV. And, and for the first time, uh, a whole generation got to watch it on television along with their families. 
uh, and that just created a, a tremendous uh, you know viewership phenomenon uh, with you know some of the episodes of ramayan actually uh, hitting an all time global high in terms of television viewership but to me what was more interesting than the statistics is how families came together uh, because one of the phenomenon that we've seen in the last few years especially with digital uh, is the fragmentation of the viewership down to an individual where uh, you know uh, when i was growing up Uh, the entire family got around uh, the television during dinner uh, but now you see you know uh, my son is on his ipad my wife is on her ipad or you know everybody is on their own devices uh, so so that family viewing just uh, went away with the advent of digital but what we saw during the lockdown was families came back together and there was also a very curious phenomenon uh, where families were not just watching these epics together they were also sharing it on social media their experience and and that i think uh, was something that didn't happen two decades back when these uh, epics originally aired because there was no social media back then uh, so you have this collective viewing experience and and that was a tremendous confidence booster to the country uh, as it came out of uh, the lockdown and the the first wave uh, of uh, covid-19 in india uh, one of the greatest challenges uh, during that period Uh, was on how to get the message out because the virus what we knew of the virus our understanding our knowledge of the virus was changing what precautions to take were fast changing uh, because initially it was about washing your hands with soap and you know not touching surfaces then it became about maintaining you know social distance uh, then it became about wearing masks uh, and then our own understanding of how it was being transmitted itself as evolved from droplets to you know airborne uh you know transmission and so on uh, so getting this messaging across uh, was a huge challenge because as you know india is a very diverse country uh several languages 23 plus official languages hundreds of dialects so to get the social messaging in this dynamic environment uh, to a diversity of communities uh, was a great challenge and i think that is where the public broadcaster uh, really came through and it was also reflected in the data uh, that uh, the the greatest Uh, investment in social messaging during this period was actually by the public broadcaster uh, the second biggest effort uh, and i think every country has i mean my colleagues from bangladesh indonesia spoke about it as well perhaps every country has had to go through this was how to keep education going uh, because uh, it is not just enough to say you know you can, you have online education uh, because there is huge diversity uh, disparity in terms of access Uh, to internet access to high speed internet availability of multiple devices because if you are talking of a home with two or three kids you know how do you get each of them a device uh, to to you know have their own online uh, classes right uh, so uh, so this is where broadcast media played a huge role uh, with tv and radio uh, we in india were blessed uh, with a very unique platform because our path from terrestrial television was something different unlike most other nations which have gone from analog terrestrial to digital terrestrial uh, we took a completely different uh, path where from analog terrestrial we have gone to a free to air across the country direct to home satellite platform now the benefit of having such a free to air uh, direct to home satellite platform was that uh, it had a nationwide reach uh, now the latest figures are about 40 million households uh, its geographical spread was the entire landmass Uh, again you're not restricted by you know the terrestrials uh, limitations there and more importantly the number of tv channels uh, so we have 50 plus dedicated channels for education so all of them were fit to use our own 20 plus uh, doordarshan channels which you do general entertainment and news through the day were also repurposed for education so you had you know more than 70 tv channels broadcasting educational content to address the needs of the different parts of the country because you have uh, different languages different curriculum uh, so 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 that entire diversity uh, had to be supported by this platform and that's we were very lucky uh, that you know this platform was there and came very handy for us uh, similarly on the radio side uh, educational programs on radio again uh, in remote areas have uh, continued to be delivered in fact just last week uh, in uh, jammu kashmir uh, we have been uh, airing classes using radio and i was just looking at the figures that is you know few mil- three three to four million students are benefiting uh, from that uh, so so uh, so old media in the new normal uh, was a life saver i think that's an understatement uh, 
because it was there when everything stopped and it continued to be there when everything got back on track and including uh, most recently during the second surge which was very severe uh, exponential growth uh, in cases uh, almost a paralyzing effect across the country uh, and uh, during this time uh, doordarshan uh, ran a campaign uh, on uh, the importance of masking up so we had just below our uh, channel logos on every tv screen uh, we would put our logo of you know why you need to mask up and uh, even our anchors and reporters went on air with masks so that not only for their own safety but to underline the important message that you know why it is important to wear the mask uh, so so all of these efforts were put and uh, uh, more importantly because the second surge happened so fast uh, it was very important to get the right kind of medical advice and uh, so we've been running uh, hours of live programming with you know expert doctors taking questions from viewers and responding to them and clarifying the myths and the misconceptions getting the right message across because uh, just a simple thing for example like proning uh, was a huge life saver because it just would allow so many to recover at home without putting pressure on you know the oxygen demand uh, so so things like these i think have made a big difference uh, advising people on what uh, drugs not to take because again you know there's so much of misinformation out there Uh, so so these doctor uh, interactions played a huge role uh, more importantly because uh, what we have seen during the second surge is uh, a lot of families having multiple fatalities and 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 the mental health implications especially with children uh, were immense so uh, we had special programming around that as well uh, so uh, so the public broadcaster has been you know playing multiple roles uh, not just uh, entertaining not just educating but being there Uh, to hold hands and uh, and to give relief and you know uh, play a healing touch role and uh, all of this was possible uh, because of technology and uh, we were uh, lucky that because when i joined this organization in 2017 from the it digital world uh, i was surprised that you know everything was paper based we was completely manual and in the last 3 years we have taken so many steps to uh, be it enabled automated and to embrace digital tools that it came handy during this uh, pandemic situation but had we not taken those measures uh, it would have been impossible for us to you know function in uh, you know in this environment with these challenges uh, so uh, information technology was uh, you know a very very crucial uh, factor uh, in uh, in coping with the challenges the constraints posed by the pandemic uh, the uh, one of the key things that you know when i look at the, the entire phenomenon over uh the last few months weeks uh, how uh, media has played a role uh, i think a very important uh, aspect which emerges uh, to me is that you know whether it is the old normal or new normal uh, there are certain values and those values have to prevail public service media i think has shown that uh, and to you know uh, to further elaborate on what i mean by this Uh, we have often seen that media tends to uh, you know focus on the sensational aspects of what has happened uh, and this phenomenon has gotten even worse uh, with the advent of digital and what you know is commonly referred to as clickbait journalism so you have uh, you know an extreme sort of headline an extreme sort of an image or an extreme sort of a video because you know that will gather eyeballs that will get shared it will go viral and so on uh, but unfortunately that phenomenon has you know exacerbated the problem during this whole pandemic rather than providing solution i think this is where public service media has always played a very different distinctive role that uh, to public service media it is not about only focusing on the problems but it is about being a part of the solution finding a solution and enabling solutions uh, because it is very uh, easy to find problems and when you have a country as large as india billion plus people and democratic accountability not only will you find every problem that is possible in the universe uh, but you will also find enough you know uh, critical voices uh, but the, uh, but so media has to make a choice right do you focus on uh, those uh, extremities or do you you know become an enabler for uh, finding solutions creating a positive environment so we all you know collectively come out of this challenge for the greater good uh, i think this is where uh, it was a little uh, distressing that some of the global public Uh, service media uh, who you know have an international presence i think uh, fell short uh, in their uh, you know uh, 
uh, haste to perhaps attract more eyeballs, more traffic. Uh, they, I think, fell into this trap of clickbait journalism. And it's very unfortunate that such reputed institutions, uh, you know, have uh, uh, exaggerated and reported in a manner which I think is not consistent with the values that they own, uh, you know, public service media holds when they're at home, when they're reporting at home. Uh, so I think that's a message that I just want to leave out there and perhaps, you know, a topic of discussion as well, broader discussion on, uh, you know, should media focus only on the problems or should media become an enabler for solutions? Thank you. Thank, thank you, Shashi Shikhar, uh, Vimpati. Should media be an enabler or, um, you know, be a part of that big problem? I think um, very many interesting things that you've said today, all media to the rescue, and um, values uh, from public service media that should prevail. So these are things that we should really look into and we will deliberate further. So for those of you who have just joined us, um, we'd like to say hello to um, Mr. Mayang Agarwal, the newly appointed uh, president of the AIWGC by the Indian government, and also to our two repertoires who are here, Pat Mayor from Seychelles and um, Mr. Abu Siddiq from uh, Bangladesh. So we will be documenting whatever's being spoken, and hopefully this will be shared with all our broadcasters. So I'd like to move on next um, to our next speaker, all the way in the past, as well as undergone a tremendous amount of um, issues as well uh, with the event of the pandemic. And uh, we're talking to Dr. Mahindra Vista. Uh, Dr. Mahindra is also a seasoned journalist and um, in mass media across multiple platforms. He was in the print, broadcast, new media, and currently he is the executive chairman of Nepal Television. And um, he has also led several private news uh, medias uh, in Nepal, and um, he was elected as the president of the Federation of the Nepali Journalists, the umbrella organization of working journalists in Nepal. So you have 15,000 active media persons. And I know personally that Nepal is such an active country where media is concerned with a huge number of um, community radios that you have there. Um, and some of them are members of AIBD as well. So he's also a recipient of various national awards in his illustrious career as a journalist, and he holds a PhD in press freedom in Nepal. That's good to hear, and has served in various capacities in government and non-government bodies. Thank you so much, Dr. Mahindra Vista, for being with us today. Um, and I'm waiting to see what you have to share today. Revitalizing of traditional media. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Philomena. Hello. Uh, good afternoon and namaste to everyone. It gives me immense pleasure in participating as well as making a presentation in the Leaders Web Summit on redefining the role of media in the new norm, which is very relevant at this time. As the theme of the session is revitalization of traditional media, before I start, let me give you a glimpse on the impact of COVID-19 and the measures we hear at Nepal Television took to survive one of the biggest crises to the world has faced. I'm coming from, face from the condolence ceremony of, this, of one staff of Nepal Television who passed away last night due to COVID-19. More than 100 NTV staffers have been infected in the two waves of infections. So far, 20 working journalists have died, including one from NTV due to COVID-19, and 900 have been infected in Nepal. I will definitely try to highlight the issue in the presentation as well. To see the screen. To start with, let me put you a question. Is traditional media working traditionally in real terms? In my opinion, many traditional in my opinion, many traditional media, namely radio, print, and television, who have been in existence for centuries, have slowly but surely adopted emerging new practices. This is the age of media convergence, and I don't think we can put all in a single basket. Even for survival, 
it's mandatory for traditional media to collaborate with digital new media parallel and of course the changing revenue dynamics gives with no choice content have been redesigned for multiple platforms is for the convenience of the consumers let me talk about the changing media dynamics the demand of viewers or media consumption pattern has changed drastically with the emergence of new media even to address the change in media consumption dynamics traditional media have to revitalize themselves and the best way forward is to adopt the change what makes it easy for traditional media media the revitalization is the cost effectiveness already having a robust setup adding digital age to it in additional to the years and years of credibility is not difficult or expensive the re revenue of media advertising is, is also changing fast compared to little over 104 billion us dollars traditional media got from advertisement in the year 2021 digital advertising amount did more than 170 billion us dollars in the same period speaking about traditional media especially television team coke is the core of its coking culture covid-19 affected team coke to a large extent in traditional media while some like print media adopted work from home culture to the best practice for television and radio it is it was nothing more than a slogan because of that nearly 25% of our workforce was infected revenue collection was lowest ever in record ntv survived the first year by maintaining the revenue but not sure if the pandemic remains for longer period in house production especially mega reality shows had to stop entire production until was almost idle having spoken of the ch challenges let me tell you that about the opportunities the pandemic brought there was there has been renewed interest among viewers in television some data suggests near the 10% increment in television viewership globally television houses learn to recycle their contents digging deep into the archives focusing more on live events educational contents and most importantly contents on public health television explored cost effective contents through recycling distance learning through tv covid specific programs like covid hotline corona care were some of the new contents in the television new practices like remote broadcasting was adopted keeping everyone safe from the pandemic overall the consumption increased all increased at the same time production was comparatively cost effective what is the way forward now for traditional media the only answer is revitalization revitalization can be on four levels starting with technology adopting technology towards media convergence is the first way to revitalize the traditional media technically they should be capable to produce and disseminate contents across multiple platforms this pandemic has given a wake up call to all those traditional media who are not investing focusing on convergence it's the best time to neutralize it revitalization contents is the second step content recycling is one of the is one way of doing it another important step especially in the south asian context is to change the priority national broadcasters in this part of the world including nepal television have been prioritized politics state policies and government voices over other contents majority of the contents on the screen are either 
overshadowed by political politics or government. This is the best time to change the priority from politics to public. Contents on the public issues, institutional development and service delivery can be focused now. For example, we had been broadcasting government's plan and policy on health every year, every day, but never focused whether they are well equipped for crises like COVID. Now is the time to focus on such issues and more research as well. Under the pretext of COVID-19, traditional national broadcasters can shift their priority to make themselves public's voice rather than the government's version. How about the revenue streams? As the earlier slide showed how digital advertising is dominating the media market, traditional media should start exploring the same in their strategy. The models of revenue generation should be explored and practiced. Once traditional media adopt technology for the same, it becomes easier to explore such options. Finally, revitalizing through human resource development and change in work culture is needed. Human resource who have been working in traditional media have to be trained and developed to be capable in the changing media landscape. Before they can work across multiple platforms, that traditional mindset has to be changed. Cross-platform work ethics have to be adopted so as to produce equally enriched contents in all platforms. Content sharing culture between broadcasters have to be developed not only in the pandemic, but for future as well. This will at least ensure each other's survival. In this regard, institutions like AIBD can play a vital role in human resource development and content sharing. Traditional broadcasters like NTV will look for help and cooperation in this regard. To conclude my presentation, neither traditional media is entirely traditional nor fully convergent. It's not becoming extinct, but in transforming itself in the new normal is for the need of the time and more impartial, importantly for survival. Keeping the COVID pandemic and the impact in mind, the lesson seems to be transformation through revitalization. Only transformation at technological content, revenue, and human resource and work culture can revitalize the traditional media. Let's all work together to re revitalizing traditional media as the source of credible and authentic information in the age of fake news and misinformation. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dr. Mahindra Bistar. That was very insightful. And um, I actually like your uh, four takeaway points uh, that you've given, right? Uh, technology, content, revenue, and human resource. And um, there's a lot of uh, key points in there, which uh, we will discuss later, right? Because um, I believe that uh, transformation and adopting um, the new trends. And uh, like Shashi pointed out earlier, you know, you can't run away from that digital or these kind of uh, platforms because you need to know how to um, mix both and, um, you know, create something which is really vibrant. So I think we're going to come back to that. But first, I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Fintan McKiernan. He is a service provider. He is with Ideal Systems um, in Southeast Asia. He's based in uh, Singapore currently. And um, he is actually has done a lot of work for um, studios, facilities, and systems for Radio TV Malaysia. I've seen him in many conferences in Asia, Singtel, Media Corp, Sony Pictures, you name it, it's all there, even Astro. And uh, Fintan happens to be a member of the ABU's Engineering Excellence Award panel of judges. And prior to joining Ideal, Fintan established Omnibus Systems in APAC, and now it's known as Grass Valley, and he has worked in broadcast technology roles in the US and Europe. So Fintan is a regular contributor and speaker at most broadcast uh, sessions or seminars. So Fintan, 
And I will invite you to give a view of what's happening and what you think of the revitalization, revitalization of traditional media. It's over to you, Fintan. I can see you all. I can see clearly. Yes. Well, Mina, thank you very much. Can thank you hear you. me okay? Yep, fine. Very good. Great. Okay, great stuff. <laughs> Uh, thank you for that kind introduction. And uh, yes, you, you, before COVID, people did see me a lot <laughs> across Asia. Um, and it's a lovely panel I'm on here. Um, and I do spend a lot of time traveling across Asia and meeting broadcasters and, and uh, understanding my market. Uh, apart from Cambodia, and sorry to uh, my colleague from Cambodia, I've, I've, I've visited uh, all the countries here on the panel. Um, I'm one of few people to have driven a rickshaw across the entire length of India. Um, and actually through the border past Darjeeling and up into Nepal and onto Kathmandu. So uh, strange things that I do in my spare time. Um, and uh, just before the lockdown here, uh, my last international trips were really to Bangladesh and to Malaysia, actually. So um, the only one not on the list is Cambodia. So I'm looking forward to an excuse to go to Cambodia. So maybe after this presentation, uh, the uh, um, uh, Cambodia will, will be interested in me going to visit as well. Let me share my screen and... Uh, talk about this presentation here. Um, so this was a question that was posed to me. What are the current relevant broadcasting technologies available to facilitate online platforms, media production, and work from home to complement the role of traditional media? And this is uh, in, uh, in, in, in obviously relevant to the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, needless to say, uh, COVID-19 has come along. I'm in an empty office because uh, Singapore has worked from home uh, lockdown as, at the moment, as, as are many of the ideal offices across Asia right at this moment in time. Um, uh, but we're still able to work, and that's because we use a lot of systems to do that. Um, and that's really the point. The, the, the pandemic has uh, really pushed uh, uh, a lot of technologies and, and a lot of cloud technology. Uh, adoption as well. Um, so, and really the point here in terms of traditional media is where is our broadcast technology going? Where is the broadcast business going? Um, and how can we leverage that technology to our advantage? And uh, a simple answer to this, that, you know, just is it's, it's going to the cloud um, and it's following companies like Netflix. Uh, that's where our technology, that's where our underlying technology is going and has already started to move. Um, why is that the case? Uh, because it's where the money is. Um, now, there's a lot of national broadcasters and state broadcasters that are uh, not necessarily commercial in terms of their state funded and so on. So they're not all that focused on the money per se, they're focused on the content and everything else. But the reality is, is that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the money and investment. Um, the broadcast technology research and development budgets are going into cloud technologies because they're following the money, right? And that's the key part. That's the key part that broadcasters need to think about. Technology is moving on, has moving on real quick. Uh, it's been speeded up by COVID. And because of COVID and because of the success of the OTT operators and because of their huge budgets that they're putting into production, that technology is, is going to the cloud and, and the, those, the, the, that's where the broadcast manufacturers are focused. So their R&D money is going to the cloud. So, and what I mean, the, the, the follow the money, things, recent ones, Amazon's uh, MGM acquisition, eight, eight and a half billion US dollars, uh, AT&T and Warner Media uh, merging in a $43 billion merger. This is only in the last few weeks. Um, people like Disney, um, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, purchasing the uh, film and TV assets and the channels of uh, Fox, 20th Century Fox, um, 71, $71 million. Now, if you look at that, there's a lot of broadcast channels that are available all over Asia on this screen at the moment and, and many more. Um, they're going to the cloud. In fact, Disney's stock price is going up, even though their, their, their theme parks have been shut down and they're their uh, uh, cruise lines have been closed down and, and their hotels have been closed down because they're moving to a direct-to-consumer model. Um, so these guys are all pushing uh, to cloud, direct-to-consumer. But they're, you know, these, are, these are broadcast channels. These are, these are television channels. This is where linear TV is going. It's not just OTT anymore. It's not just on-demand. It's the whole kit. It's, everything is going this way. Amazon Prime, Discovery, changing to Discovery Plus, Disney Plus, 
and at Disney Plus, Disney are shutting down their linear channels in Southeast Asia now. Um, you know, and Netflix pushed away. And you know, again, Netflix has a very high valuation on the stock market because Wall Street and the uh, analysts estimate that this is where the business is going. So this is where the value is. And the broadcast technology or and D follows the money. Um, Disney goes up in value because it's going direct to consumer. So OTT in the cloud, direct to consumer equals dollars. Great, we understand that. But OTT is not just about the delivery. The OTT operators are leveraging cloud technologies at the back end too. This is the bit that isn't in the press. This is the bit that most people actually miss at the moment. The actual underlying technology that these production companies and play out companies are using has, is moving to the cloud. So they're not just using and leveraging cloud as a delivery mechanism, they're leveraging cloud across their entire organizations, no more than Amazon is for delivery or Grab for taxis or Zoom for video conferencing. All of these are leveraging cloud technologies. So it's incumbent upon broadcasters, national broadcasters, traditional broadcasters, um, uh, direct to, you know, the, um, to digital terrestrial broadcasters and the, 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 the regular normal broadcasters, um, previous uh, speaker mentioned a wake-up call during the pandemic for traditional media. This is it. This is the wake-up call. You need to be looking at how to leverage cloud technologies in your back end. So what does broadcast technology uh, look like today? And it, this is very high-level look. Um, you know, you've got NAM systems, uh, you've got content and studios, uh, you've got production management, so production asset management systems, newsroom systems, traffic, editing, rights management systems, uh, storage systems, uh, graphics, automation, uh, playouts, and coding, transcode. These are kind of the main technology functions that exist in a traditional broadcaster today. Um, and this is what Ideal has been doing across Asia for the last 30 years. We've been physically building these for broadcasters, at broadcasters sites on location, and then all of these different systems come from a range of different manufacturers and we, we, we literally glue the systems or integrate the systems together using uh, fiber, baseband, coax, CAT6, serial connectors, you know, it's, it, it, it's a very physical guy goes in there, that guy goes in there and starts plugging cables around the place, you know. Um, but that changes and, and that has already changed for the OTT guys and what happens, what is happening now? is all those physical devices, the, the boxes that you used to buy from the, the traditional broadcast manufacturers, they're all migrating those systems to cloud-based systems. You won't buy the boxes anymore. You'll buy a license and you'll, you'll either download it or you'll, you'll use it. It's not just a software package. You'll just use it out of the cloud. So you'll connect to the cloud. So the broadcast, the the, the functions of broadcast don't change, right? You've still got studios, you've still got to do the same amount of work, but the underlying systems will change. And more importantly, the current systems that you have today, no one's putting R&D money in. So they become obsolete because all of these manufacturers are working on the cloud version because the cloud version is better, it does more, right? Now I've got a limited amount of time here, so I can't drill into it, but you'll notice- two minutes, two minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, so you'll, see, you'll notice a couple of extra things, an extra a couple of extra clouds here. You're starting to see AI in the top right, full Dior. Dior, disaster recovery. That used to be something that cost a fortune. In the cloud, it's just, you know, it, it, it doesn't cost anything extra. You've no, there's no physicality to it. It's, a, it. it's an extra license cost. It's some extra CPU and you don't use it. You don't pay for it unless you use it. So. This is where the future is going. Now, the problem is, um, in the past, where we stuck cables together to wire all these systems together, these systems still need to interoperate. And how do they interoperate? Now, this is a big problem for broadcasters. This is something that we at Ideal realized was a big problem a couple of years back. Um, and we realized that they all need some sort of integration, some sort of cloud integration. So that's what we've done, and that's what we've brought to the market. And we're not the only ones, but we're, we're certainly one of the leading ones and one of the first out. So we developed a, a platform called Alice that glues all of these systems together in the cloud. And that allows the integration, the orchestration, and the control and management of your systems through the cloud. Now, in a COVID world, that means that you can do 
not just editing, but remote editing, not just production, but remote production. You don't have to bring your people into the control room. You can bring your control room to your to your to your people. Currently, in in for example, in Malaysia, you have to go. We've spent lots of the last couple of days getting onto the government, trying to get people certified to that they can just travel into RTM, so we can keep the control room on air and keep the channels on air. That's not necessary in a cloud environment. Those people can actually do that work from home. So a massive change, a massive step change in technology, and it's not just. You know, you know, people say, oh, I don't want to put all my stuff in Amazon or Alibaba or Google Cloud and all that. It does, it, the, the cloud isn't about whose cloud it is. It's about the underlying fundamental technology. It can be your own cloud. It can be on-premise, actually. It's the technology. It's the, it's the, it, it's the way the technology works. So, Thank you. Uh, Fintan, you've, you've exceeded your time. We'll talk right. more okay, about well, that's, time. that's great. I'm on, my, I'm on my last slide now. So yeah. that's it. That, that, that was it. That's about uh, where you. we go with the, with, with the cloud. Yeah. I'm looking at Alice. Thank you, uh, Fintan. That was Fintan um, McKernan. And uh, moving on next to um, our last speaker, Mr. Rajasingham, Lion King of the education world. Uh, it's right there, Brickfields Asia, um, you know, if you talk about law studies in Malaysia, it is BAC. And uh, this man has actually changed the whole face of education. And besides being an educationist, he's also a philanthropist. So Raja Singham was named as the Education Man of the Year and uh, by Brand Maria, and he has received the National Outstanding Educator Award in 2015. And recently, just this year, he was appointed as the ASEAN Business Advisory Council, ABAC, uh, and a lead mentor of the ASEAN Mentorship for Entrepreneurs Network. So he founded Backflix. You're talking about Netflix, but this guy came up with backflix.com, a free online learning portal. And he has established Make It Right Movement, or MIRM, and Give Back Dogmai to help the most vulnerable. And even recently, Raja has been doing this uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic with oxygen um, donations and so forth. So without much ado, I'm going to call Mr. Raja Singham to the floor. Thank you, Raja. Hi, thanks, Lorena. Uh, thanks, AIDV. And uh, so great to be here with so many great panelists. I, I learned a lot today. And uh, I think I'm the only non-media person uh, here today. Uh, okay, my the topic given to me was, because I actually switched it, uh, was talking about leveraging media for social good. Uh, so that's actually the area that I want to look at. But before we start, uh, I think all traditional media have to realize that the competition out there is huge for attention. Uh, today, everybody is technically a media owner. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, the, people create their own media, you've got TikTok, you've got YouTube, you've got Netflix. And as well. So I think the biggest problem when I, I remember when I was a kid, we had two channels. RTM1 and RTM2 in Malaysia, and that was it. And it was all linear programming. Uh, today, we have hundreds of channels. We don't even know what to watch, and we still can't find something you want to watch a lot of the time. Uh, so I think the big challenge for everyone is going to be how to remain relevant. COVID has been a bit of a boost, and just now I think we're talking about a 10% increase uh, in those watching linear TV. But I don't know what the increase is like for, say, on demand, like Netflix, Prime. I think everybody had an increase. Uh, so that's another aspect. But and a, a lot of broadcasters are now carrying lots of these messages, stay at home, stay at home. I sometimes wonder whether they just want us to stay at home and watch TV so that they don't increase the viewership. But I think it's, it's about, you know, like, what, like Darwin said, it's not the strongest nor the most intelligent of species that will survive, but the one most adaptable to change. And this is where I think traditional media needs to change. The new normal has helped because people are at home work from home, a lot of people have their TVs on, uh, families sit together, but once this is over, how is media going to prepare for the next normal? And you've got to ask yourselves, what can you do that's going to be a generation better? Now, having said that, media has done a great job during the pandemic, uh, educating the public on all the SOPs and you know how to stay safe and, and, and observing the wearing of the mask and various things that have been shared. And on the other side, education channels. Almost every country from India to Malaysia to Indonesia has had channels that have come up in order to help children cope uh, with being displaced from schools and the fact that a lot of the schools weren't ready and a lot of the kids don't have devices. We ourselves run, BAC Flix was actually 
um, an online learning portal, a free portal we set up a few years back before the pandemic, and we had about 170,000 students uh, on the Malaysian syllabus studying for free. Um, and uh, it's tailored. But again, there will be kids without devices or net access who can't access these things. So, I mean, I think all media should be given a big thank you for the great work done during the pandemic. My worry is once the pandemic is over, how are you going to reinvent uh, to cope with that? Uh, because when things go back, uh, you may suddenly find that intense competition will come back uh, of, you know, to try and get people's time. Of course, you know, that'll be an aspect. Now, the other thing is, I think collaboration is a key forward. So if you look at Astro, Astro has just done a, done a tie up with Disney Plus. And I think, you know, we have got to understand on the one hand, you've got people like Amazon Prime and Netflix and Disney and ESPN and Fox and all of that. And then on the other hand, a lot of the broadcasters here are national broadcasters from, you know, Indonesia, Nepal, India, and, you know, with the national broadcasting. And I think there's room here for collaborations um, to get so that both parties get to leverage off each other. They get access to the local content and, you know, there's access to international content as well. And I think that's one of the key players, uh, how th players should be thinking moving forward. So if you look at someone like Netflix has got some level of Malay programming, but very little compared to a broadcaster like Astro or RTM or TV3 in Malaysia for, th for that matter. So I think what I see going forward is more collaboration. So of course, in the West, a lot of it has been buyouts. Uh, Disney buying up, you know, Pixar and Disney buying up uh, um, the, the Marvel, you know, the Avengers and, you know, that kind of thing. But I also think there's a lot of room for people to ramp up with collaborations. And see, one of the key things you have to understand is, um, as mentioned earlier, cloud is going to make a lot of things cheaper. And when it makes things cheaper, it also increases competition. I, I run a lot of services on the cloud which are free, uh, job platforms, educational platforms, because it's just so cheap to do. But this is where broadcasters will have uh, more competition. Now, a key aspect also is this. I think as broadcaster and media, what was uh, uh, brought up by Shahid just now, I really agree. You know, you've got to have your purpose as a broadcaster. What, what's your purpose? You're trying to transform lives of people through giving them information. And it has to be values-based because what's going to differentiate the real media guys from the others who come in there just to spread, you know, fake news, rumors, and, and get the click and bait, uh, as I was mentioning, is ultimately going to be the values, staying true to certain core values. Now, these are some of the things for me, media and social good. Media tends to, and, and a lot of international, and we're talking not just, you know, in the West, to focus a lot on negative news because there's this negative news bias. People tend to want to want, hear bad news more. People want to tend to hear more dramatic, uh, uh, you know, uh, things that are bad. And there's a tendency to then fuel this. I have more arguments and fight. And I think a key problem here is that there is a need to focus on solutions. So media should actually look at a lot of programming on how to help people. If there's a problem of hunger, how do we solve that? If there's a problem of access, you know, lack of access to education, what good ideas are there? If there's a, you know, a, a, a problem in, you know, in terms of, say, for example, discrimination uh, between gender, you know, and, and so on, how do we solve that? The UN SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, are a great guide of 17 goals, which I think media should look at, but highlighting possible solutions to the problems rather than just highlighting the problems. And another key problem is, I think, in a lot of cases, uh, national broadcasting are generally owned by government and hence are often used as mouthpiece for the government without really much else going on. So I think there is a need here as broadcasters to sort of tell the government to sort of say, no, we will take your message across, but we also think this is important to be said. Now, whether you get to keep your job after that, I don't know, but I think that's a very crucial element that if you want to be in media, you've got to look at it. Media has immense power. You can change the narrative, you can change the mindsets of people, you can change the biasness. And if you're pushing up positive stories as opposed to negative stories, you will find that people will slowly change. The next generation, the Gen X, the millennials, all of these guys, you know, the, the, the generation after us, are very much about protecting the planet, are very much of, you know, a different mindset. 
and they find a lot of this content online and that content resonates with them. And if we as traditional media or media does not make that change, we will find that they will stop watching us. It's as simple as that. They will stop watching us and get their stuff elsewhere. So they get very excited about people wanting to do good. They, they are wanting to change the world. Of course, you've got that one group that's really not bothered they do very much himself. But generally, that's why we see when you get people like Elon Musk talking about saving the planet, uh, you know, SpaceX, Tesla, energy, they listen because it resonates with them. So I think if the media is looking at, you know, staying relevant, uh, what can we do a generation better? How do we mix? How do we get there? You've got to start looking at different types of mixes in terms of what you're operating. It can't just be TV. It's got to be TV, apps, social media, you know, online. Getting these influencers on board may not be what you like, you know, what you're used to, but getting them on board as part of your content and then linking it. Uh, so I, my main thing is this, I actually really want media to look at themselves that they are responsible for changing and making the world a better place. And you have the ability in you and that power to do that. Just use it. You Thank know? you, Rachel. Yeah, so uh, just basically, those are the key things. Think long-term and, and put some of these aspects in. And uh, thanks so much. Uh, sorry if I've offended any media people. I didn't mean to. It's just that uh, I... I don't think there's any offense. Uh, it looked like you were giving us a lot of advice, though. But, yeah. uh, you know, but those were really interesting points that you brought out, you know, um, about technology, using technology. And um, I do have to agree with some points that you mentioned, because I think we are now entering into the phase. Uh, thank you, Raja. We're now going to take up this discussion. Many interesting stories have come out of this. Um, and uh, Mr. Raja himself said something like, um, the focus, you know, we all went through a major pandemic. We're still in the pandemic anyway. And uh, all of us said that, okay, so uh, traditional media is so important. It's an educator. Indonesia said that, um, you know, it's so good. I'm missing some of my panelists. Um, so, Nabil, if I can have all my panelists on Zoom. Yes, Dr. Mahindra. Okay, so the thing is, we, draw, we, we listened to six uh, leaders here in Asia Pacific, and one of them from the... Um, uh, service in technology sector, he was talking about the future of remote broadcasting and Raja Singham was talking about why it's so important, media for a social good as well. And uh, yeah, so we heard so much, uh, but the, here came a strategy, right? So we all went through this pandemic. Every one of you said that traditional media is like the first wave, you know, it, we just went back to it. Uh, but what is important is to look at how you're going to revitalize this. And what are some of the key takeaways? So uh, I'm going back again to what Dr. Mahindra Bista mentioned about these four things uh, that you should look at. And I think Raja also echoed that uh, in his, um, in his uh, speech, his speech there. Yeah. So uh, I would like some questions now. So what happens is uh, one of the things that's really happening and has seen a change is media has always focused on economic news. It is always focused on political stories. But COVID-19 taught us to show something else, you know, because every other sector was failing. And uh, we went back to the human factor. And I think focusing on the human factor, human stories, I think uh, Shashi mentioned about engaging or enablers or, you know, these kind of words that came out. So I want to throw this question to all of you, one by one, Shashi first. Shashi, what's your plan? for traditional media after this. You've seen uh, how it has helped in education, you know, in disinformation, you know, in putting everything back, masking up India campaigns. But tell me what's your strategy post-COVID? How will we bounce back? Thank you. Yeah, I think post-COVID, uh, the, the key thing would be to continue the technology transformation process. Uh, I think- Can so we have the, everyone's uh, mic switched off except Shashi, please? Thank you, we're getting background noise. Sorry, Sashi, go on. Some of the, the, the technology uh, areas that fin uh, Dr. Finton pointed out, I think those are clearly what is on our horizon, that we have to be cloud-based, we have to enable you know, anywhere, anytime access uh, to, uh, to be able to do your tasks. And unless we get into that model, we will not be efficient, we will not be, uh, you know, uh, be able to prepare for the future. So, uh, so clearly that is the direction to go, more automation, more cloud-based. 
uh, more remote uh, tools and and uh, basically to break the silos in which traditionally broadcast technology operated and make it more you know ip based it enabled software enabled uh, i think that is the future on the technology side on the content side uh, uh, clearly uh, we are seeing in india for example uh, that a certain genre of content and a certain class of demographic of the audience is now completely digital and and uh, so uh, so you have to think digital first you have to act digital first uh, broadcast will be important it will continue to be important uh, but uh, to engage the audience you have to be digital uh, and digital then becomes the conduit to bring them back to broadcast when there is something big happening uh, you know news of importance is breaking live sports live events uh, uh, so those are uh, content that will always be digital forte uh, but to engage in a very targeted way with audience segments you will have to be uh, more and more uh, digitally savvy uh, so uh, so that also means that content innovation has to happen the way we create content has to change the way we present and package it has to change it has to be more uh, digital friendly it has to appeal to a, a, a younger demographic uh who are you know perhaps ways ahead of us uh, with using things like platforms like twitch and you know uh, social gaming and so on uh, so we will have to innovate and reinvent how we uh, do content thank you i think um you mentioned a lot about uh, digital and, and and new platforms and a lot of uh, cross um you know cross promoting here and there and that is actually very essential i think um the new technologies that we have adopted is so important but what is also important i think in this uh, era is uh, content really looking at how content uh, should be given to the audiences because at the heart of all digital every kind of technology is the human being right the human factor and humans need to be engaged and they need to be um you know they have to have a reason why Uh, they're going into this. So if you look at all these OTT platforms, most of it are like uh, entertainment, entertainment stories or music uh, kind of programs or you know on-demand stuff. But um, traditional media, therefore, has to give something else to the audience, and I think that is something that we really need to look at. And um, perhaps it's also teaching us that we need to look at core human values. Shashi, you spoke about that. Uh, this value embedding thing as well. Um, so I'm going to move on next to the uh, other speaker, Dr. Mahendra Bista. You mentioned some very interesting points. So tell me, are these going to be um, put into uh, consideration when you revitalize your television industry again in Nepal? Yes, uh, thank you. Hello. Uh, we are going to uh, launch our television new channel that's uh, NTV World, and we want to. Uh, exchange our views to the world one thing mm-hmm. is that and uh, in revitalization uh, we have to focus on i already mentioned it uh, content content is supreme so we have to uh, yeah. we uh, frame uh, our content uh, technological and also the uh, our priorities also focus on public not only in the government and this i, I think so. okay Thank you. And I want to talk to uh, Mr. Iman from uh, Indonesia. Mr. Iman, are you with us? Yes, Mr. Iman brought to say no. So, um, you know, during the pandemic, you were looking at television uh, as a tool for, uh, you know, helping out with the ec- economic sector, right? With lots of your programming. And then we were also looking at your um, TV as a tool for education. But all this is happening. during the pandemic so what are your future plans to revitalize the traditional uh, sector traditional medium thank you yeah uh, yeah as i speak uh, as i said before that uh, we change our role of model uh, during the way we communicate in broadcasting yeah so we not we're not only provide uh, for instance the entertainment or news or the music videos or kind of the drama series we also has has to be become the government agent actually to help the uh, small industries during this pandemic because people now mostly in home so uh, uh, 
Next, uh, we also put attention uh, on the program re relating to the government. Uh, government. I'm losing your voice. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, next, we also uh, to put attention on the program relating with the government efforts to help small and medium industries in Indonesia. We encourage society to to use and the local product by giving them the insight and how the local products quality can actually complete with the big industries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, also because everybody now in home or stay at home or work from home. So uh, so we help the promote also everything related to small industry. And, and the next, uh, we still uh, doing our uh, what we normally do in TV broadcast yeah we still uh, provide or we still produce the documentary we still produce the uh, music video mu concert music with the health protocol actually we still produce the uh, entertainment or news but uh, we still have no idea when the pandemic is over so and, and now I think uh, we still have to focus as a public broadcast media. So uh, beside that other that we do before that we also take responsibility for the community. So, so in, uh, yes, that include the how the provide the education from home actually that's Thank you, Iman. I think uh, one of the key areas that you should look at uh, is also looking at the community itself, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Reaching out to the grassroots level. So television should really focus not just on, of course, you know, you have news and, uh, but you should also be focusing on the grassroots and what's happening. So that I think uh, people always want to know what other people are doing. So, okay, so there you go. We've got um, some very interesting uh, input from all of you. And I'd like to move on next to, um, our colleague in Bangladesh, yeah, Bangladesh TV. Yes, Mr. Ash, I forgot your name now. Yeah, so we need uh, some input on what Bangladesh, input from Bangladesh on um, Mr. Sharap, what are planning for the future? Sharap, is with us? Yeah. Okay, so do you have any plans on how you will revitalize the industry after this? Any strategies in place? Hello? Okay, so we're going to discuss the strategies per se, right? So what do you think is the one key uh, uh, idea that all of you will take back uh, to reboost your television, traditional media, that is? So can I hear from the um, uh, speakers today? I've lost my Bangladeshi um, DG. So I'd like to move on uh, to Shashi, Shashi, you've spoken a lot about how the value system comes in. Shashi, what's your one big takeaway for today? If you were to go back Hello. and start. Hello. Yes. Hello, I'd like to say from Bangladesh. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Then I'll move to Shashi. Thank you. Yeah, question, please. No, I'm asking you your strategy. Do you have a strategy in place? Do you have, have you seen something uh, that you're going to go back and do um, in order to revitalize the industry? Yeah, uh, we have a plan actually that I mentioned that we are uh, strength, we feel strengthened now. Mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 we are trying to um, uh, incorporate in our programs with uh, the uh, social media viewers to uh, reach them and also uh, we, 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 we are uh, trying to go to the uh, my viewers through our reporting, through our live programs and other programs, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we think that we'll be uh, able to uh, be with the viewers and we'll be able to uh, uh, interesting, uh, make our programs interesting uh, mm -hmm. by technological development and yes. also the program content. Thank you. Thank you, Shorab. I think you're doing a great job there. And I'm sure all of us uh, CEOs have learned very valuable lessons. And some of you have mentioned that AIBD itself is championing uh, spectrum, the race for spectrum uh, together with ITU to ensure that traditional media 
remains relevant. I'm going to ask my last question is if Shashi, I can't see him on the screen. Shashi, are you still with us? Yes, yes, I'm right. Hey, Shashi, so what's your one big takeaway before we close? Right. I, I think the, the biggest takeaway is, you know, just listening to my colleagues here from different countries and their experience. I think there are lessons to be learned. We need mm -hmm. to do, uh, you know, far more uh, exchange of these, uh, you know, experiences, case studies, anecdotes, best practices. Uh, I think you're doing a great job here at AIBD, you know, facilitating this process. I think this needs to happen at a more frequent, perhaps, uh, yes. at a, uh, and more also at the operational level, because I'm sure there are so many lessons to be learned. Uh, mm -hmm. on you know uh, how uh, both technologically and as well as uh, you know from a content standpoint uh, the various uh, new things uh, you know innovative things uh, that everyone is doing so so to me the biggest takeaway is uh, you know uh, we're all faced with a, a huge challenge uh, we're all coping with it in our own uh, innovative ways and i think there is a lot that we can learn from each other thank you shishi and i'd like to move to fintan fintan you are looking at the way remote broadcasting is going to work for the future. The radio has always been remote, but when we talk about television, um, more and more you can see audiences on Zoom or uh, speak at Zoom. Zoom is everywhere, even in the news, I think. So Fintan, um, any takeaways? Raja, a non-media person actually said something interesting. So do you have an advice for our um, media friends having worked with so many broadcasters in Asia Pacific? Fintan? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For the broadcasters, I, th I think they what they should look at is is not the technology in and in and on itself what they should mm -hmm. be looking at is what the technology can enable when i'm talking about cloud technology here and for mm -hmm. broadcasters there's going to be some important deliverables that they will need from their technology in the future mm -hmm. they will need to be able to reduce cost they will need to be able to increase quality and flexibility they'll need to be able to create value more value and remove silos and you know broadcasters are sitting on huge archives of 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 content for example the use of ai for a more detailed indexing uh, you know quick example there new technologies will enable broadcasters to do more with what they have it, it so the key takeaway point here is is don't move to cloud technology just because it's the next thing the reason that the companies i mentioned earlier are succeeding with cloud technology is because they're leveraging the benefits and that's the key point. Um, and from a holistic point of view, especially where the governments are concerned, they need to look at television, not just as broadcast media and not just as separately as social media or OTT. They need to take a holistic view and the cloud is the technology platform to enable that holistic view. So governments that aren't looking at a cloud approach to broadcast are actually missing the point. And the governments that treat television and social media delivery of of television as separate are definitely missing the point so there's, there's a lot to be learned here we're on and and it's a very rapidly changing landscape um you mentioned philomena earlier you mentioned about uh ott and the likes of netflix being very much uh, an entertainment platform that's because that's where the money is what are broadcasters and what our national broadcasters do creating news and creating daytime tv shows every day it's expensive that's why netflix don't do it that's why those guys don't do it but as soon as they have, have got their uh, foundation, they will start doing it. And you'll start to see linear channels from the OTT operators. You'll start to see sports coverage from OTT operators. And you'll start to see news from OTT operators. News is expensive. Studios are expensive. Cameras are expensive. It's expensive business. That's why they're doing it. Not because they can't. The technology does. So, you know, yeah. it's unfortunate for the broadcasters, they're, they're burdened. They have to create the news. The national news is important. Thank you, uh, Fintan. I, I come from uh, the broadcast um, sector. And, you know, once I was told when, when Malaysian um, news, sorry, new, Malaysian uh, Astro music channel started, they said 24 hours nonstop music, you know, and they thought they could just survive like that. But later on, they digressed to things like interviews, you know, and then having a news and traffic reports and, and all sorts of things. There's one thing that's a very clear that you know, with human beings always like this connectivity. We, we, we just can't be listening to a music channel or something like that. So that's why I think if people are watching TV, two things are very clear before pandemic, okay? It's one is news and the other is sports. I think Raja would agree with me because BAC has pumped in a lot of money into Fox, uh, Fox TV you know, with their ESPN channels and so forth. BAC is a big name there. So this is something that has happened. TV is for that. So now we're trying to reinvent and create 
good content. And uh, India did a fantastic job with bringing back uh, archive programs. And I think this is another area that traditional media should look at, looking at how you can create good uh, content base to tide over during uh, periods like this, where there's a huge budget cut and so forth. And AIBD is definitely going to work towards that with our TV AIBD, which is a content sharing platform. Uh, Raja, I'd like to ask you a final question. You've been giving, you know, the food say advice here for the media. So final words, Raja, before we close. Thank yeah. you. Uh, for me, very simply, it's always going to be content is king. Whatever mm -hmm. else is there, it's going to be con producing content that people want to see, producing the things that the community wants, the public wants. So I think content is king across. But I also feel very strongly that the next generation is going to be mobile first. I spend, you know, about every 10, 11 hours a day. I have uh, Netflix, you know, everything, Prime, everything on my phone, 100,000 books, 100,000 videos from LinkedIn Learning to Coursera, everything there. But the younger generation is worse. They just carry the phone, they watch YouTube on their phone, they watch TV on their phone, they watch their news. So 80% is actually on mobile for that generation. So I always push all my staff and everything we do say, think mobile first. They're not going to be watching off big television sets and so on. So they're going to be switching off between social media, uh, um, you know, tra traditional media, TV, everything on their handphone. And in the future, TVs are going to be seamless. You just walk into your room, your airplay or your screen share will just switch to the big screen when you come back. But that will be the last two hours of the day or three hours of the day for the rest of the day, it's going to be that handphone. So I think that's where broadcasters have to now start saying, how do I maximize that handphone attention, that space on the handphone? Thank you, Raja. It's very interesting, mobile first. I guess like what um, Cheshi mentioned, right? You have it on traditional medium, meet platform, and then you also have it on all those digital platforms. You, you get as much as possible and put your content wherever possible. I think that's one way of looking at it. And of course, now very recently, um, there are lots of immersive technologies that are being used in television programming. Uh, and there's a lot of changes that are coming up. And I think that's gonna be pretty exciting uh, for the television industry. We can't just operate the way we operate like, like now, right? So we're looking at AI and a whole lot of new things. I think experts like Shashi will be able to tell us more on that. So immersive technologies are also being uh, put into television and uh, the way television cameras are working, 360 cameras, I think these are all being employed, for instance, in Japan. These are bringing new uh, pictures to your screen at home. So yeah, so it's been very interesting talking to all of you today. And I'd like to say thank you to Iman, Shashi, Rajasingham, and um, Dr. Mahindran Vista, uh, Finton, and of course, uh, Mr. Shora. It's been a very interesting discussion and I don't think it has ended, but for now I have to end the show. And uh, it's back to my uh, colleagues here, first to Chamnan, our MC for today. Thank you, gentlemen. Can thank we you. have a group photo first? Ah, yes, of course, group photo. Yep. So the count of uh, three, two, one. Just a moment. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, back to Chamnan. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Right. Thank you for a good program. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Philomena. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome back to the uh, today uh, special summit that uh, special uh, session that Ms. Philomena have been uh, moderating. It's a very good 